Hello friends, I am Dr. Fareen and today we will be discussing about cervical insufficiency. So let's start. Main cause of second trimester loss is cervical insufficiency as the name suggests that the cervix is insufficient or incompetent. So most of the time the cervix is open. So the patient has painless cervical dilatation. There is no pain or bleeding. It has second trimester pregnancy loss and the baby delivers early with every progressive gestation. So suppose in her first pregnancy, she delivered the baby at 34 weeks. In her second pregnancy, she will deliver the baby earlier, 32 weeks maybe. And the third pregnancy, she might deliver the baby at 28 weeks. All right. So what is the cause of this cervical incompetency? It can either be a congenital cause. Okay. So there is some inherent problem with the musculature of the cervix, which is making it weak. It can also be associated with uterine anomalies, right? Mullerian anomalies, which has made the cervix weak or the mother had diethyl stilbestrol exposure. What can be the acquired causes? So the acquired causes is any procedure which has involved the cervix like dilatation or curettage or any therapeutic procedure which led to removal of a part of the cervix like maybe a biopsy or maybe at the time of treatment. So dilatation and curettage Conization of the cervix, where removing a part of the cervix to take the biopsy, cervical amputation as a part of the Fothergill surgery, or trachelectomy when we are removing a part of the cervix along with the upper vagina, or cervical tears from a previous birth. Okay, so this is what we do in a cone biopsy that we are removing a part of the cervix. You can see that the depth of the tissue of the cervix which has been removed. So the more the depth of tissue is removed, the weaker the cervix becomes. All right, this is the trachelectomy operation. So here we are removing this entire part, the cervix and some part of the vagina. So this also leads to weakening of the cervix. It shortens the cervix. So as we are discussing, the classical history is mid trimester loss along with painless cervical dilatation. And on ultrasound, what are we going to see? That the cervical length is less than 25 millimeter. So the cutoff of cervical insufficiency is cervical length less than 2.5 centimeter or 25 millimeter all right so what are the changes that you will be able to appreciate in an incompleted cervix on an ultrasound so this is a normal cervix okay first of all you can see that this is the head of the baby all of this part is the cervix and the cervix is closed see this is the line and this is closed so this is a t-shaped cervix and this is normal so this is the length of the cervix still here now in this second scenario what is happening that there is funneling up and this is the length okay all this part is the cervix so what is this known as this is the funneling and this is we can see that reduction in the cervical length so two things are happening here and this is giving the picture of y Okay, so here we can see that the cervix is opening up a bit. If the cervix opens up further, see, so what is happening? The funneling has increased and the cervical length has further decreased, right? This is giving the effect of V and now the cervix has completely opened up. So this is the U-shaped cervix. So this is how the cervical incompetence progresses on the ultrasound. Now, what is the treatment? So, since the cervix is open, we need to close it, right? What is the procedure of closure known as? It is known as cerclage. So, we need to do cerclage operation. Now, this cerclage operation is can be either done vaginally or it can be done abdominally, okay? So, vaginally, the two procedures done are Shirodkar and McDonald. We can see that in McDonald, the cerclage is applied at a lower position. In Shirodka, the cerclage is applied at a little higher position, but both of these are vaginal. And the third approach is the transabdominal approach. All right. So let's discuss them one by one. So the McDonald procedure, which is the vaginal procedure, what are we doing? In that we are holding the cervix, we are taking the proline tape and we are taking sutures around the cervix. Okay. These are known as the typical purse string sutures and we are tightening up the cervix and we are putting a knot over here okay the modification which is the shirodkar we all know that the knot is put higher at level so since it is put at a higher level what do we need to do 
we need to mobilize the bladder as the bladder will also come in the knot okay so this procedure is little complex and requires bladder mobilization so here what we doing we giving a slight neck we pushing the bladder up and again we taking the sutures the sutures are taken by marceline tape this time all right and what do we do in abdominal approach so abdominal is done as the name suggests trans abdominally it can either be done through a laparotomy or it can be done through a laparoscopy so the suture is closest to the internal os and when we deliver these patients so we only deliver them by cesarean section all right so who are the patients how are you going to select the patients in whom you are going to put the cerclage so earlier there used to be a lot of confusion about this but now rcog has come out with a clear cut guidelines they are very sharp definitions in whom you are going to put this cerclage all right so first of all they have categorized these women as high risk and intermediate risk okay so who are the high risk women you need to remember all these points all those who have a previous preterm birth or a second trimester loss between 16 to 34 weeks or who have a preterm rupture of membrane at less than 34 weeks basically these two points are similar or the patient gives a history of previous use of cerclage she is a known case of a uterine anomaly she had had intrauterine adhesions or she has history of a trachelectomy so what we will do in these patients in these patients we will do tvs every 2 to 4 weeks starting from 16 weeks onwards okay so from 16 weeks onwards every 2 to 4 weeks we will do transvaginal sonography till what time till 24 weeks at any point of time between 16 to 24 weeks if the transvaginal sonography says that the cervical length has become less than 2.5 cm then we put cerclage in these patients all right coming to the intermediate risk patients these patients will give a history of previous full dilatation cesarean section what do we mean by that that they had taken a full trial of labor but still they did not deliver vaginally and at full dilatation cesarean section was done on them previously okay or a large loop of excision was taken from the cervix or she has had more than one procedure of cone biopsy okay so what are we going to do in these women we will do a single tvs at between 18 to 22 weeks if the cervical length comes out to be less than 25 mm then we will go ahead with the cerclage all right so the types of cerclage are history indicated okay or it can be therapeutic so history indicated again it is done in all those women who are intermediate risk and high risk and on tvs monitoring it has shown that the cervical length is less than 2.5 cm all right therapeutic now therapeutic can either be ultrasound guided okay so here what we have done that we have incidentally found that the cervical length is less than 2.5 cm otherwise these women are asymptomatic and we have gone ahead with the cerclage then the second is the rescue cerclage also known as physical examination cerclage or emergency cerclage so what is happening in this in addition to the ultrasound indicated cerclage guidelines these patients are symptomatic okay or on physical examination it has shown that the cervix is incompetent so it is done in cases of premature cervical dilatation with exposed fetal membranes in the vagina which you found out during the examination and hence it is exam indicated cerclage or in patients with symptoms of vaginal discharge bleeding all right and this is an emergency situation but in all of them the cervical length is less than 2.5 cm this cerclage can be done up till 27 plus 6 weeks of period of gestation okay so after knowing the indications of cerclage we should also know what are the contraindications of cerclage so contraindications the broader classification is that any patient who has infection okay who has a low lying placenta who is in labor or who has a anomalous baby so in these patients cerclage is contraindicated okay so infection preterm premature labor of membrane can have infection chorioamnionitis as the name suggests infection 
placenta previa vaginal bleeding cervix more than 4 cm has gone in labor having uterine contractions or the baby is anomalous or there is fetal death okay so in these patients cerclage is contraindicated why are we putting the cerclage because the, we don't want patient to go in preterm labor so therefore we will remove the cerclage at 37 weeks again when do you need to remove the cerclage earlier so the indications are if the patient has gone in labor or if the patient has infection all right so this was all about cervical insufficiency thank you so much